the hills in 1770, he left to posterity a heritage of golden sunshine in a land of incomparable beauty, a surface paradise, Australia. Australia possesses innumerable sandy beaches of varying directly facing the open ocean or forming the foreshores of countless bays and inlets around the coastline and with warm sunshine prevailing for the greater part of the year, offers ideal facilities for sea or surf bathing. New South Wales might be regarded as the home of surf bathing in Australia. The beaches extend along the coast almost in an endless chain, and many are in close proximity to Sydney. During the weekend, its popular beaches are crowded. There you will find visitors from the country, tired businessmen and women from the sea. The Sydney beaches are noted for their beautiful surf girls. Ah, here are a pair of priceless Pacific pearls. And apparently they're on the rocks. In this panoramic view of Bondi Beach, we are able to get a glimpse of its beautiful promenade, its alluring foreshores, the up-to-date swimming bars, the bandstand and the motor parking area. The hundreds of motor vehicles we see here, which have taken advantage of these facilities, testify to the popularity of Bondi, which is one of the most beautiful of Sydney's many glorious seaside resorts. Its beach is one long stretch of beautiful soft silvery sand, and the long line of surf rolling in from the Pacific makes an irresistible call to the bathers of either sex. Here in this champagne-like surf, the bathers frisk away long happy hours during the summer season whilst thousands picnic along the sands. Now, once upon a time, there were three bears. We should worry about beach regulations. The surf bathers along these beaches enjoy their bathing in comparative safety, owing to the fact that they are constantly under the vigilant eye of the lifesavers who patrol these beaches. Now, with the object of stimulating enthusiasm in the work of surf lifesaving, inter-club surf carnivals are held regularly during the summer months. The members compete in life-saving events, supplemented with swimming and surfboat races, and other athletic events. Along the coast of New South Wales, there are approximately 70 clubs, with a membership of over 5,000. Surf rescue work is often fraught with great danger, especially during the rough weather conditions which prevail at intervals along the coast. Now, the ever-watchful lookout man suddenly spots a bather in difficulties immediately gives the alarm, whereupon each man flies to his post. The beltman rushes ahead, adjusting his belt as he goes, dashes into the surf, hurls himself into the breakers, and fights his way towards the bather in distress. On reaching him, the beltman signals to the reel and linesmen, who with great care draw them to the shore. Great care is used in handling the distressed person. Upon reaching the shore, he is very carefully placed on the ground, and before the work of resuscitation begins, the patient's mouth and nostrils are carefully examined to ascertain that the air passages are not obstructed by foreign matter such as seaweed, false teeth, etc. Although there's no record of false teeth being found in a person's nostrils so far. Oh, look, she cries, a flying fish. Ah, no, 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 cries he. Just some mother's son doing a perfect body shoot. Sir, will you show me how to body shoot? <laughs> Too right he will. I am afraid Myrtle doesn't grasp the idea. So he explains more thoroughly. It's all really so simple, when you know how. This young lady demonstrates the rubber surfboard. These boards are a great asset to those who want to learn how to body shoot. Probably this young lady was presented with this rubber surfboard by her boyfriend, who, at some time or other, had the contour of his face altered by coming in contact with a wooden one. And now reverting to the body shoot. To acquire the art of shooting a breaker, one must necessarily be able to swim, if only possibly. The majority of beginners content themselves with those waves that break in on the sandbanks, 
And it is in these shallows the beginner first acquires the art. Standing in anything from three to five feet of water, the novice waits the unbroken wave, waits till it is almost upon him. Then he throws himself in front of the breaker as he would in taking a dive and away he goes. It's great fun to get out to sea in about 10 or 15 feet of water to crack one of those big fellows the way in. That's where a chap gets a thrill. You wait a yard or so further on than where you expect the wave to break. Then as one comes rolling in on you, over on your side you go, side stroke fashion. And then, as the swell towers above you, you simultaneously give a pull with your arm and a scissors kick with your legs and your face in the water. And the way you go on your journey to the beach. Oh, it's glorious fun. And one doesn't realize what he's missing in not knowing how to shoot a breaker. Another delightful experiment is duck diving. A corpulent pal of mine thought duck diving would be an excellent thing to reduce his ong bong pong. He only tried it once. The poor fellow couldn't keep a thing on his stomach for days except his hands. The art of duck diving seems to consist in hitting the sand with the top part of your diaphragm. You extend your arms, hollow your back in a swallow dive, taking care not to dive and swallow. Now they say that Hebrews find it very hard on account of their nationality to live in Scotland. Cohen tricked them. He changed his nationality through duck diving. He dived off as Cohen and came up sandy. Another of the delights of the surf is experienced with a surfboard. The surfboard was first introduced to New South Wales in 1909 by Mr. C.D. Patterson now the president of the Surf Life Saving Association of Australia. It was sent to him as a gift from a friend in Honolulu. Surfboards are mostly made of Californian redwood. Our beaches are crowded daily by those who enjoy the breakers, but comparatively few Australians have experienced the transcendent delights of a surfboard, its rippling shoreward flight as impetuous and graceful as the sweep of an eagle. Surfboard riding, which had its origin in Hawaii, is growing in popularity. The waves on Sydney beaches break more quickly and steeply than the long rolling swells on Waikiki Beach. They are harder, therefore, to negotiate with a board. Consequently, there were many difficulties in learning to master its intricacies. In recent years, a big advance has been made in the art of surfboard riding and a number of Sydney men would now compare favourably with the Hawaiian experts. Practically all these are members of the Surf Lifesaving Club, and the value of the board as an aid to lifesaving has not been overlooked. In a heavy sea, it is often possible to take a board out more quickly than a belt and line. Thus establish the board as a useful means of rescue, and to encourage and develop its use, surfboard rescue events are made special features at the carnival. Another stirring feature of these beach carnivals is the surfboat races. These boats are sturdy little craft. Each man in the crew is compelled to wear a life belt. And this is the latest type of belt worn in surfboat races. It is no easy task to get one of these heavy surf boats into deep water. The gallant little crews fight their way through the surf to get their boats afloat, then in scramble the four oarsmen, leaving the sweetsman to push until the crew have started to row and he springs aboard and controls the sweep. The race is on, and the excitement amongst the spectators is intense. The gallant crews are battling against the towering incoming waves, straining every muscle in the grim fight. There they go. At one moment, they are seen riding high upon the crest of a wave. The next, they seem to be engulfed by the mountainous billows that tower so high above them. Up they come again, with their intrepid crews straining gamely at the oars. Up she goes. And on they go, heading into the breakers that are travelling shorewards at the rate of 30 knots an hour, pounded by tons of water that threaten at any moment to send them to David Jones' locker. Look out! It's an epic struggle. And so, with a will, they bend to the oars with only one thought in mind, victory. On their return shoreward, the crews watch every breaker of which they take the fullest advantage. And riding upon the crest of them, dash towards the winning post with the speed of an arrow. And in a final effort, the sturdy sweepsman riding high upon the summit of a piling wave brings the winning boat safely in home. And so, with a
with the setting sun. Let us all heed the call of the earth.